Hello, good evening. Welcome to Prime Business with me, Pius Kojo Baka. And look now at our stories. Without a further monetary policy tightening by the Bank of Ghana, the rise in inflation will not subside. According to research firm IC Research, the Monetary Policy Committee baseline forecasts show a slightly higher elevated profile in the year ahead. There is more in this report. It said the upside risk could become embedded in underlining inflationary pressures if not contained with further policy tweaks. The recent inflation expectation survey by the Bank of Ghana indicated that business expectations of inflation remain flat at an elevated level. IC Research believes the unchanged inflation expectations reflect the favorable impact of the four consecutive months of decline which was offset by supply side and tax induced inflation upticks in the past two months. It added that the renewed spike in crude oil prices on the global market, with Brent crude reaching $85, could revive non-food inflation with higher utility tariffs under the baseline. Essentially, the inflation monster has been only dazed by ongoing fiscal and monetary tightening but will not be finished off without further policy tightening. A while longer on the economy and the World Bank is expected to complete review of government's flagship projects by the end of next month. The move is part of ongoing support from the country's development partners to help reduce government's rising expenditure. Some of the projects being covered under this review is the Free SHS Initiative and the School Feeding Program. Finance Minister Ken Ophuriata disclosed this on GTV's Current Affairs Program, Talking Point. If we look at um, what you call the primary expenditure, uh, which was uh, about 20.6% um, um, uh, percent, um, of, 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 of the revenue, um, we have been able um, through this period um, to reduce it to 16.3%. Um, so that's a huge percentage of GDP that has occurred um, um, through that period. Um, so yes, in terms of uh, having an eye on how um, MNDAs spend money, um, the way in which um, contracts are approved, you know, the things that you uh, would not see, mm. uh, which really has a huge impact on, on our cost, uh, are being tackled. Um, and then we also have working with the World Bank, a uh, complete review of all the flagship programs, and we hope that by the end of September, we'll get a sense of what that is for us then to take um, action as to efficiencies and leakages that, that we must do. Um, I don't think anybody is, 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 um, um, is he committed to keeping expenditures high. We, we need to constantly drive towards those efficiencies and more importantly also increasing revenues. Okay. Uh, because if you look at um, our current um, budget, I think we are adjusting by almost 3.8 percent in this first year and that is huge mm -hmm. by any standard mm -hmm. um, so that we move to minus 0.5 percent and for the primary balance um, so there's rigor in what we are doing we expect that by the time we get these assessments and analysis uh, we will be even more um, surgical in the things we do uh, i think most of the clamor um, has been um, reduce the number of ministries, etc., etc. Something um, that can be tangibly seen, seen yes. uh, according mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. And what can be tangibly seen, Doc, would be that three or four ministers uh, may not be there, mm -hmm. but the 650,000 um, civil servants will not change. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so that that's also mm -hmm. the reality of the numbers. So when we sit at the Ministry of Finance or Cabinet and look at issues of primary expenditure and begin to bring that down, that really goes to a structural changes okay. that, that we are confronting. Meanwhile, economist Dr. Patrick Isuman says government will not be able to implement substantial expenditure cuts. He further urged government to minimize the perks of public officials and merge some government agencies with similar mandates to protect the public purse. In the spirit of burden sharing, which the finance minister and the government has been preaching, perhaps, you know, my, my first area would be, you know, rethinking uh, the perks that we pay to uh, uh, political appointees, our public sector workers. Because 
you know, even though we felt that there's been some slashes, I think, you know, if you look at the burden, the amount of burden that has been put on ordinary Ghanaians is quite substantial. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one area I, I would think about. But I know cutting the ministries is a popular area. Maybe I would think of it, or cutting the number of ministers is a popular area. I would probably suggest merging some of the uh, agencies, government agencies, because, you know, we've seen a proliferation of, you know, government programs to support different aspects, especially businesses, and then some of them seem to be doing similar things. So duplication of those secretariats, in some areas we should look at. But finally, we also have to think about, when we talk about the expenditure rationalization, it's not really only about cutting expenditures, but making sure that we are getting value for what the for, from public expenses. Mm. So we have to ensure that when we spend a city of public funds, we are getting the value for its worth for the for the city we spend. I think that is another area we should be looking at, making sure that every project that we do, there's a genuine value for money uh, review to ensure that uh, the public purse is not being uh, it's not being uh, misused. Director for the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, Professor Peter Kwate, is appealing to government to return to the implementation of the fiscal responsibility law, the law which restricts government from borrowing more than 5% of the previous year's revenue to GDP was passed to ensure fiscal discipline. Speaking at a press briefing to review the mid-year budget, Professor Kwate urged the governor of the Bank of Ghana to be firm and not breach the law when lending to government. Here is more. A call from Professor Peter Korte follows revelation that the bank made some losses last year, partly as a result of its exposure to budget financing and the domestic debt restructuring. The Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research has been reviewing the media budget. It recommends some solutions to government that will address the country's budget deficit, high inflation, and concerns of stagnant growth in the private sector. According to Professor Korte, it's about time the government stick to the law and ensure that the Bank of Ghana law are not breached. The uh, Fiscal Responsibility Act has to be revisited. That's the point we are making, that yes, it has to be there. Then the Bank of Ghana itself had a, an act um, that it cannot lend more than 5% of its previous year's revenue uh, to government. That would have to be respected uh, strictly. And I believe with these two, we, should, uh, we are good to go. Um, this issue of uh, government having to fall on the central bank to finance its deficits by over 80 percent uh, will be kept if, if we implement this strategy. Also responding to the assertion that the economy has turned around the corner, Professor Kote argued there is more to be done to begin the recovery process. The point is, if we have turned the corner, then there are many corners we have to turn. Um, we have turned one. There are many corners we have to turn uh, because if you look at the rate of inflation, it is still high uh, comparatively, but if we compare with our peers, exchange rates depreciation relatively stable, but yes, we are suspended debt payment, debt servicing, uh, and it's very uncertain to what extent the foreign creditors are going to allow a haircut, what are they going to forgive us, and what are they going to ask us to pay. But I'm hoping on the balance of it all that um, we'll be able to afford and pay and have some stability. Professor Peter Korte therefore advised government to take a second look at the electronic transaction levy and broaden its scope to cover e-commerce businesses whilst reducing the rate further. Winnings on sport betting as well as national lottery are expected to attract 10% withholding tax from August 15. This is because the Ghana Revenue Authority is set to begin enforcing revised tax laws for the gaming industry. There is more for you in the list reports. The application of this levy as part of a broader review of the income tax on gaming and lottery operations in the country. The Ghana Revenue Authority in a circular said the passage of the income tax amendment will now result in a 10% on the gross winnings of persons that involved in sports betting and lottery winnings. The withholding tax deduction, according to the authority, applies to winnings paid or payable by private lotto operators, sports betting operators, casino operators, route operators, remote interactive games operators, operators of marketing promotions, and operators of other games of chance. 
Prior to this, some operators in the industry, including casinos, route operations, and marketing promotions, started the implementation of VETS policy on June 1, 2023. Sports betting and private lotto operations are also expected to commence the implementation from August 15, 2023. So, for instance, if you place the bet of 15,000 Canada cities in a football match and you ended up winning 60,000 cities, the application of tax will minus your original stake and subject the remaining amount of 45,000 cities as the tax. This should mean that 4,500 Ghana cities will be the amount that you are likely to pay to the state. Holders of the domestic dollar bonds and cocoa bills now have more time to decide on whether to participate in the debt exchange program. This was after the government extended the deadline for closing the offer for these two financial instruments. There is more for you in this report. The finance ministry in the statement maintained that the extension of the domestic dollar bonds was in response to feedback from eligible bondholders for more time to secure internal approvals to participate in the offer. However, Cal Bank, which is leading the Cocoa Bills offer, was silent on the reasons for the extension. Settlements for the domestic dollar bonds will now be done on the 21st of August 2023, while the Cocoa Bill settlement will be done on the 25th of August 2023. Government is hoping to restructure almost 20 billion CDs worth of bonds when you put the value of these two papers together. This exercise is very important in securing the next tranche of funds from the IMF for this year. Meanwhile, senior finance lecturer at the University of Cape Coast, Seriam Kawa, is optimistic government will exchange the projected $809 million in the second round of the domestic debt exchange program. However, he emphasized the need for government to intensify education for bondholders to achieve the target. The $809 million can be achieved by government if they are able to educate the bondholders very well on the need for the exchange. This is going to be a win-win situation for both government and the bondholders. And so, and a lot of the bondholders, they are only interested in their coupons being maturing and they are getting their returns over time. What the coupons, when we talk about the coupons, we are talking about the interest rate on the bonds. That's what most people are interested in. And so there is the need for government, there's a need for Bank of Ghana, Securities and Exchange Commission, and the, bank, um, the uh, Ghana Stock Exchange to come in to educate these bondholders on the need for uh, enrolling on the domestic bond exchange and the benefits that they are going to get on it. When people understand the reasons why they are supposed to participate in this uh, exchange, that would be very much appreciated by them. The lessons learned from the individual bondholders and the pensioner bondholders should inform those who are still holding the bonds now that it will be to their own benefit to enroll onto it. A while longer on the domestic debt exchange program because the Director General of the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, NIT, Dr. John Ufuritinkran has indicated that his outfit is willing to participate in the second round of the domestic debt exchange program. According to him, the terms of the offer are more favorable than the initial DDEP, hence the decision to subscribe. He was speaking at the 2023 edition of Employers Breakfast Meeting. The Social Security and National Insurance Trust NIT held an engagement with employers in the country to deliberate on how to ensure the prompt payment of SNIT contributions of their employees. The trust, as of June 2023, retrieved 132 million cities arrears through court cases. Speaking to the media, Director General of SNIT, Dr. John Ufuritinkran, said the trust will make sure it has enough liquidity to pay pensions when they are due. The government has tabled a new uh, offer for hold pension funds that are holding 
uh, government bonds. Um, the, 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 the terms of the offer certainly are better than I think the first one that was floated. Uh, we do hold some government paper. Um, I think it's about a little less than a billion Ghana cities of government paper. We will look at it and then we will, um, you know, um, subscribe um, and make sure that uh, we, we are we have enough liquidity to be able to pay our immediate benefits when they come due. You know, the, at SNET, uh, the, the way we pay our pensions, part of it is from the fixed income, uh, which will be partly affected. Part of it is from contributions, and part of it will be from other investment uh, income that we have. Uh, we've had a bit of a headwinds vis-a-vis -vis dividends from the banks. But we believe that all this is temporary and that uh, in the next uh, year, a couple of years or so, we'll be back to trend. Deputy Director General in charge of operations and benefits at SNIT, Pearl Nana Amadaku, urged employers to be compliant and pay SNIT contributions of their employees. Let's, all of us here, care about the bottom line, i.e. your profits. Therefore, a good corporate social image and the culture of your organization is important. The contribution you pay provide a sense of security for your workers and promote industrial harmony. Your continuous compliance also positively impacts your image as a good social and corporate citizenship. The 2023 edition of Employers Breakfast Meeting was held under the theme Providing Pensions for All, the Role of the Employer. Jesse Agbapo's report read to you. Now, Ecobank Ghana PLC says it will continue to deepen its relationship with its customers to aid in the expansion of the company's operations. According to the Executive Director and Head of Consumer Banking, Dr. Edward Bucci, his outfit will come up with various innovative packages to give back to its customers. He was speaking at the final draw of the Ecobank Double Salary Promo Reloaded. Bank rewarded 186 customers at the end of the Ecobank Double Salary Promo Reloaded. 70 customers were, however, rewarded at the final draw. Dr. Boutre disclosed that the bank will continue with its engagement with various stakeholders. It's, it's been an interesting three months. Um, we began this uh, journey um, in, in May, and we've now come to the end of this, this phase. But I think, as you've all heard, this is not the end of the journey. It's the end of the promotion. But the account itself continues, the benefits to the account continues, and the other events and activities that Ecobank would continue to have for its uh, clients would, um, would continue. So perhaps, as they say, watch the space, we would be doing a lot more. And, and we, we are um, quite glad with the, the interest that our customers have shown in this. We are, we are quite glad with the number of customers that have come on board because of this. And I think the, the pledge that we can make to our, our client base is that we will continue to excite you would continue to, to come up with new new ideas to, to keep you happy with the brand. The Ecobank Double Salary Promo Reloaded was meant to reward existing and prospective customers who receive their salaries through the bank. The Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry has pledged its commitment to deepen collaboration with Multimedia Group Limited to help in articulating issues of natural, uh, national interest. According to the Chamber, the partnership has become critical to the growth and development of the economy. Speaking to Joy Business after leadership of the Chamber paid a working visit to management of the Multimedia Group Limited, President of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Clement Seyamuaku, said his outfit will be signing an MOU with Multimedia, which will focus on advocacy, entrepreneurship and policy direction to help accelerate economic development. Credible institutions like this that do most of our coverage and send credible information, I felt that as a private sector, we need to work in harmony with them to support the government in most of the activities they do. And most especially, also where we need to criticize. I think that this is also a very good platform for us to tell the government, look, can you look at this way? 
some constructive criticism are very important for our nation. And so that they were to straighten the government to know what it must do. Sometimes when you are leading, you might be making some small mistake you don't even know. It is good that we take this opportunity to address the government, to stand tall and be able to work. And where the government is also doing well, we commend them. And so today, as part of our visiting most of the medias, we selected multimedia because for us, they are the best that we know. And so to have some interaction with them, look at the key areas that they are performing, which we can collaborate as a chamber with them. And then work hand in hand to support our members, support Mother Ghana and the world as a whole. And so today we were privileged to have them with us and we have discussed extensively uh, what we want to do going ahead. And I believe that this meeting is going to help us into the future um, so that we'll be able to um, address the nation in the best way and even the business fraternity. Now, the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization has called on academia to inculcate the use of emerging technology in teaching and learning process. According to the Ministry, this will improve digital inclusion and deepen the development of ICT in the country. Deputy Minister of Communications, Amma Poma, has been speaking on behalf of the Sector Minister at the launch of the National ICT Week, which is spearheaded by the National Information Technology Agency. With the advent of emerging technologies, Ghana is poised to fast-track the development of its technology space through its digitalization agenda. As part of efforts to drive digitalization, the National Information Technology Agency has launched the National ICT Week and the World Technology Forum. The program, which is under the auspices of the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization, will seek to deepen collaborations and enhance conversations in the sector. Speaking at the launch, Deputy Minister for Communication Communications and digitalization, Amma Poma called for the inclusion of technological tools in teaching and learning processes. We call upon our academic institutions to emphasize ICT education and research, fostering a culture of lifelong learning and technological adaptation. Embracing emerging technologies will allow us to stay at the forefront of innovation and keep pace with a rapidly evolving global landscape. On the need to develop proper data systems, Director General of the National Information and Technology Agency said his outfit will facilitate proper data collection and laws. Ensuring that we have data specific to us and even on the continent is, is, is what the dialogue has been, right? Um, data centers are doing okay. Uh, if you take the National Data Center, is doing extremely well, it's being revamped. Um, government now has a government cloud. Uh, we are doing well there. Uh, we are working with our sister agency, Data, data Protection Commission, to ensure that there's a data governance strategy. Uh, so I, I, it's, it's, it's such a critical point you've made that we cannot continue to use data that the white person has collected. That's all for Prime Business with me, Pios. Could you back up Prime Sports?